Reporters trying to figure out what the delegates are doing have to contend with shadows as well, for the total news blackout continues. They know that something serious is going on behind the closed doors. Two of the three delegates from New York State have gone home in protest. After almost four months of exhausting debates, the delegates emerge with a plan to completely scrap the Articles of Confederation. They have written a blueprint for a new nation. This convention created a constitution of an entirely new government, very, very different from the Articles of Confederation because it was a national government in its own right, with its own president, its own senate and, and house of representatives, its own court system that would reach right down to individuals, have coercive power over individuals in a way that the Confederation never dreamed of. The founding fathers have addressed the issue of power in an entirely new way. They have put forward the idea that only in a large democracy with an extensive system of checks and balances can you protect the rights of the minorities from potential tyranny by the majority. It was a revolution in democratic thought. Prior to that, philosophers had said, if, and it was a huge if, if democracy is possible anywhere at all, it has to be in a small face-to-face -face society. Pericles, Athens, Rousseau's Geneva, something of the sort. Now, they said, said Madison, no, the secret is an extensive republic. An extensive republic that will allow you to have a saving multiplicity of factions. The more the merrier. Faction used to be considered the great enemy of democracy. Madison said, no, wrong, completely wrong. Faction will be the savior of democracy. Because by having more competing factions, more diversity in the modern language, uh, you will have, again, uh, you will prevent the emergence of a stable, potentially oppressive majority. The biggest danger to our rights today is not from governments acting against the will of the majority, but from government which has become the mere instrument of this majority. Think about it. That's where the abuse of power comes from. Not the tyranny of the king, but the tyranny of the majority. Wrong will be done as much by an all-powerful people as by an all-powerful prince. The text of the Constitution is sent to the printers. It is only a proposal. It will not become the law of the land unless it is accepted and approved by the country as a whole. September 19th, 1787. The Constitution is made public. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. For the majority of the country, expecting only a revision of the Articles of Confederation, it is a real shock. They asked me how I could be against the new Constitution when our friend General Washington will be the first president under it. Well, that's fine, I say, but how about when General Sloshington or who knows what scoundrel becomes the second president? Look at the Senate being created by the new Constitution. Six years, and they can be re-elected as long as they please. It's really an appointment for life. And they'll be in this new federal city, surrounded by walls of gold, gold flowing in from all our pockets. And they'll live in this Eden with their fellow senators, far away from any knowledge of how ordinary people live. These men had just come out of a war. They had just come out of a war. They had risked their lives to fight for no taxation without representation and the power of local government and all men are created equal. And within a few short years, what is being proposed but the creation of a central government that looks suspiciously to them just like the British government that they have been fighting against. We have several things in our favor. Everyone loves Washington, and he supports it. 
Well, all the commercial interests are on our side. They want a government which can regulate trade. The people with money, of course, are with us. They need protection against the too democratic spirit of the state legislatures. On the other side are all those inferior men with very superior positions in local government. They're afraid of losing their power to a national government where, of course, they don't stand a chance of getting elected. And then there are the people. They're suspicious of strong government and they don't like paying taxes. I can't even guess what's about to happen. Everything now depends on the incalculable fluctuations of human passions. We'll know in several months whether it is yes or no.